I pushed my end file to GitHub and it cost me thousands of dollars. Hi, I'm Bernard from BetterStack.com and in today's video, I will give you 5 deadly end of mistakes that you should never do. And subscribing to BetterStack is not one of them. Okay, so the first mistake I see is developers pushing their end file to the repository. And yes, the intro was meant to be a joke. I did not make that mistake, but I see people make that mistake. Like literally, you can go to GitHub and search for .env or search for API keys, and you'll see hundreds of thousands of files and codes. And what you should be doing is create a file called .env.example. And inside of that file, you put only the variable names without values. And this file, yes, you can push it. And to avoid ever accidentally pushing your real end file, make sure that it's listed in your .git ignore. But honestly, you could also choose not to push any end files at all. And instead, just write clear documentation in your readme that says, hey, you need to create this end file with these variables. Which brings me to the next mistake, not adding example env or not documenting your projects properly. Honestly, the most neglected file ever is the readme file. I've seen a lot of projects with no proper documentation and when these developers try to work on their project again, after quite some time, they have no idea what to do because they forgot the things that they need in order to make their project work. And honestly, I've been one of them. I had a project that needed an API key and a secret key, and I don't have an example end file nor a good documentation. So what I ended up doing is reading my code, and that takes hours. To save yourself a headache, create an example end file and write a good documentation. Mistake number three, using git rm or removing the end file from your repository would save your day. Let's say you accidentally push your end file to the repository. Unfortunately, anything that you push to the repository will stay in the repository forever. Really, you can try this yourself. Create a repository, push a readme file, and delete it from your repository. Now, if you look at your commit history, you'll still find your file. So no, removing your file from the repository will never remove it completely. Now, if somehow you accidentally pushed your end file, what you should do is renew or revoke all of the API keys, passwords, and the secrets. Like, consider them compromised. Mistake number four is using one end file for local staging and production. Honestly, I'm guilty of this. I used to have like different sets of same name variables, like one for staging, local, and production. And when I worked locally, I'd comment out the production, the staging ones, and keep the local ones. Then when I needed to test on staging, I'd comment out the local variables and uncomment the staging ones. But the problem with this is it's really easy to mess up. You might forget to switch back to local before running tests, making changes to your app, or even worse, deleting data that you thought was from local. What you should do instead is have separate end files, one for development or local, one for staging, and one for production. And then you can just conditionally reference these files based on the value of, let's say, node underscore env. And finally, the biggest mistake I see developers make is publicly exposing their secrets without realizing it. This is a super common mistake, especially when working with front-end frameworks like React, Next, or Vite. These frameworks bundle environment variables into your client side, which means anything that you include could end up visible to anyone opening the browser's developer tools. So how do you fix this? Front-end frameworks have a specific safety mechanism. To expose a variable to the browser, you have to explicitly prefix it. For example, with Next.js, you could use next underscore public. For Vite or React, it's vit or react underscore app underscore. That said, you should never add these prefixes to your secrets, password, or API keys. Now, of course, there are instances where you can publicly expose your API keys, especially if they only have read-only access. For example, Superbase offers a publishable API key, which is safe to be exposed online. But here's the golden rule. Always ask yourself, would I lose a job if I publish these API keys or these end files? Would it cost me thousands of dollars? If no is the answer, then it's mostly fine. But honestly, if you're working with other developers, don't be afraid to ask questions, especially if you're unsure of what you're doing. So guys, have any of you made these mistakes? Let us know in the comments below. And if you have more tips or have best practices or more mistakes that you'd like to share, don't hesitate to share them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Bernard and I will see you in the next one.